This is the BMO2 question from 2009, question number two. So, as you can see from the start of the video where I'll show you the question, it's a very, very interesting geometry question. We're given the fact that it has two angles, B and C, which are equal, which tells us that it is isosceles. So I'll try and make my diagram as accurate to that assumption as possible. Next, we're also given that we have points O as the circumcenter of the circumcircle of the triangle, and of course that H is the orthocenter. Next, we'll just state the facts that we initially assumed, and that was that B equals C, the angles B equals C, and we'll call that angle X for the uh, reasoning of our angle searching. So we'll just label our triangle ABC in anti-clockwise order as usual, and we'll label the angles B and C respectively. Now, something interesting to do with this question would be first to acknowledge that this is an isosceles triangle such that side AC equals AB. Although that might not help initially, making this uh, observation could be useful later on in the question. The next wise step would probably be to actually draw on the ortho center and the circumcenter. So since it's a isosceles triangle, the line M, which would be the midpoint of side BC and A, will be the same line which we will use to find the orthocenter and the circumcenter. So the circumcenter is found by finding the midpoints M1, M2 and M3 of sides BC, AB and AC respectively, noting that they are all perpendicular to their respective sides. Now we'll label that point O as a circumcenter and we'll draw on the lines to find the orthocenter H. And that's essentially the perpendiculars from each side of the triangle to the opposite vertice. So we label the point H where all these three lines intersect. And we can begin with some angle searching. So we'll draw on the uh, question which was actually asking us to find or rather prove that line AB goes through the center of the circle BOH, or three points which we have currently labeled. So let's start by considering the line AB. The question essentially tells us that AB, or a part of the line AB, has to be the diameter of the circle BOH for it to be going through the center of the circle. Now, a wise thing to do would be to draw a circumcircle. Even if it doesn't look obvious at first, it may give you a few hints. And for this question, it does give you one, and that would be that the lines OA, OB, and OC are equal in length since they are all the radii of the circumcircle. So let's take an orange pen and we'll draw these lines in. And we get the line OB, OC, and the lines OA. So now that we have these three lines drawn in, it's possible to do a little angle chasing. We'll take the green pen to trace out the triangle made by the line from the orthocenter, and we will therefore find the value of the other angle that I've marked now, and that's 90 minus x, since we have a right angle triangle, so we know that b equals c, and c and b equal x, so that's just 90 minus x. From there, we can go on to find the angle, which is derived from taking the other right angle, B, M1, A, and that triangle we can get at the very top, the apex of the isosceles triangle, we have that one half of it is 90 minus X as well, since they both have an angle of B or C. And because it's isosceles, we know that the other angle, M1, A, C, is also 90 minus X. Now we use a circle theorem, which is the angle in the center is twice the angle at the circumference, and we get the angle O M one B or M one O B sorry to be one eighty minus two x. Now we have that angle as one one eighty minus two x, so we can use the triangle O B M one with a right angle at O M one B to find that the angle O B M one is ninety minus one eighty minus two x which is 2x minus 90. Now, we can find something quite interesting, which will be very helpful for our later results. 
and that will be the angle I've marked with an orange angle, and that is x minus 2x minus 90, which equals 90 minus x. So we know that the angle ABO, sorry, yeah, ABO is 90 minus x, which is the same as HBM1. From this point, we're trying to essentially find a point on the line AB so that the angle EOB will be 90 degrees, since this means that the line EB is the diameter of the circle EOB. So we'll just get rid of that line there. Now, I think the first thing we'd have to do is do a little write-up on why exactly we were able to find the point E and how it's useful. So by Thales is a uh, angle in a semicircle, which is the theorem we've used here, which essentially means that if a triangle, which has three points on a circle, has a right angle at the point on the circumference, then the other side, as in the opposite side of the angle, is basically the diameter, which is essentially going through the center of that circle, which is something we're trying to prove. So we've obtained that the point E lies on the line AB such that angle EOB equals 90 degrees, and such that BE is the diameter of circle OBE. So all that really remains to prove is that the point H uh, lies on the circle EOB, because once we've done that, uh, what we've essentially proven is that in the circle BOH, which is the one that contains H as well as B and E and O, that BE is the diameter. So we'll start by acknowledging that we need to prove that BHOE is actually a cyclic quadrilateral in order for all four of the points to lie on a single circle. And a clever way to do that would be to draw it separately so that we don't get it mixed up with the current diagram. And we'll label the angles we have so far. And that angle is just 90 minus X plus 2X minus 90, which is the angle EB, uh, EBH, and we'll sub minus the angle HBM1. And that just gives us 2X minus 90. So we'll write that in. And then we'll look at the opposite angle, which is all we actually need to prove that the quadrilateral is cyclic. And to do that, what we've done is we're taking the angle EOB and we're adding it to the angle BOH. That's just simply 90 degrees plus 180 minus 2x, which is 270 minus 2x. If we put this in, we could find the other side, and that would be a very simple question. It's just 90 minus 90 minus x, which is just x. We didn't really need that side. Um, we didn't need the angle. Because we have the two opposite angles, we need to prove that this quadrilateral is cyclic. Um, if we take 2x minus 90, and we add 270 minus 2x, we end up with a very satisfying result of 180 degrees, meaning that those two angles are supplementary, and this indeed is a cyclic quadrilateral, such that the points B, O, H, and E all lie on the same circle. Now that we've come to this very nice conclusion, we can kind of summarize about what we've found so far. So we know that B, O, and H all lie on this circle, B, O, H, E, and we know that the circle BOHE has the diameter BE, which means that, uh, in words, we can say that since it lies on circle BOE, as in the point H lies on the circle BOE, and that BE is the diameter of circle BOE, it also means that the line BE is the diameter of the circle BOHE, or also BOH. So we have proven that BE, since BE is just a, a part or a segment of line AB, that the line AB goes through the center of the circle BOH, which is a very nice proof and a very nice question. <laughs>